Thank you, everyone. And thanks for joining us today. We're going to be going over basic automation with Zapier, LearnDash, and WordPress. I'm James Tryon. I've been using WordPress since 2007. Uh, I'm the lead organizer of WordCamp Orlando this year. Uh, ambassador of WAPUS, that's the uh, unofficial mascot of WordPress. Um, you know, I got a fantastic family. You might hear them throughout the presentation. They know that I'm up here. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I enjoy hanging out with my uh, family and friends. Uh, when I'm not working, I'm usually making something. Uh, this week's, uh, I've been sanding the paint, uh, sanding the glue off of the walls that used to hold paneling from the 80s. So I took the paneling down and sanding the glue off the walls so we can get back to normal drywall in the kitchen. Uh, what we'll be covering today is uh, what is Zapier, um, what is a Zap and other terminologies used, common use cases, uh, how Zapier use, uh, works with LearnDash, setting up Zapier to work with LearnDash, uh, useful tips and tricks, We'll go over some live demos, uh, any audience Q and A's, and I have five different examples at the end that we'll be setting up along with actually uh, installing it and getting it going. So the actual talk today shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we'll go over about 10, 15 minutes worth of slides, uh, and then we'll actually get to have some fun and do a live demo. Uh, so we're gonna be going over Zapier today, or Zapier, it depends on how you want to say it. I say Zapier because it's a zap, uh, so in my mind it's easier to say it like that. Uh, what is a zap? I mean, what is Zapier? Uh, it's a service that lets you easily connect two applications or more without the need of coding. Uh, you can, uh, they have an ever growing library of apps, they're currently up to 2,000. Uh, when we first added our LearnDash Zapier plugin, they had about 300. So that's exciting to see them grow. Uh, and you can easily link uh, two separate applications or the same application um, with an easy to use dashboard with no actual development needed on their end. Uh, you know, if you did your own development, you can tie into that, which is nice. But what is it in simpler terms? Uh, I like to think of it as when blank, do blank and this and this as needed. The ands uh, aren't needed and technically would be a premium service. If you were to use a Zapier, that is the added paid monthly service if you wanna do more than one step, but for free, you can do uh, win this, do that type thing. Uh, and we are talking about Zapier today, but there is several other automation tools uh, out there. There's a one by Uncanny that does, I believe it's Uncanny Automations. There's also If Then Then That, uh, if you would like. And a lot of these things that we're going to be going over today can actually happen with add-ons or individual features. Or if you added a full-blown membership plugin, you probably don't need all the stuff that you could do with Zap Zapier. But you can also use this and connect lots of things. So uh, it's, a, it's a useful tool for sure. Okay, so how does Zapier actually work? Well, you create a task. Uh, it's a blueprint of something that you want to do over and over again without the, uh, something that can be repeated and something that can happen by itself without you or someone else triggering it and something that can be automated. Uh, Zapier uses something called a zap. Uh, a zap has at least one trigger and one action. We're gonna go over this a little bit more uh, in a couple slides, but just something to think about. A trigger is the thing that starts the zap, and the action is the thing the zap does once it's triggered. Uh, so uh, you're going to select an app, you're going to tell it what you want it to trigger, what things will trigger it, and what do you want it to do once it's triggered. Uh, you're gonna have to also authenticate your apps for the first time, we'll go over that, but if you, uh, once you authenticate MailChimp or whatever uh, newsletter service you're using or Google Apps or Asana or Zoom, once you do those things, you only have to authenticate them once and you can reuse that authentication. Uh, 
I'm sure that'll probably expire every so often. You'll have to re-authenticate it, but you don't have to do that on your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, and you should be good to go. Now, there's some other terminology you might want to think about when you're working with Zapier. Um, that's called a, a recipe. And a, a recipe, uh, trigger actions, tasks, filters, paths, multi-step zaps, uh, and autoplays. Uh, if you want to know about any of those terminologies, I recommend that we you would check out uh, Zapier's site. It, it's very informational. I, uh, it seems like every aspect of their site really is trying to help and educate you. Uh, it's a very soft sell slash inf information sell uh, style approach. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, it, we'll go over it a little later, but they even have like a, a frequently asked questions that help slash help section for our learn dash add on uh, on their site, which is really nice. Uh, but again, things, those, those other terms are, are recipes and that is a, a zap or a combination of, of zaps. Um, we'll go over it in a moment. You'll see that the free version only allows you to have one step, uh, but a paid version will let you have multiple steps. Uh, I watched a presentation where someone had a 30 step zap happening, which is pretty crazy, but that can happen. Uh, you can also set up filters if you have a paid account. So you can set up filters and triggers based off of things that are happening to uh, move things along faster or even more automated uh, than what you're already doing based off of some added features. But uh, we'll get into that a little later. What I wanted to show you in this screen is pricing. Uh, the pricing itself is free. Everything we're doing in today's version is the free version. You can have five zaps, which is five tasks. Uh, the limits are for the free version is 15 minutes. Once you start going to the $49 plan, you can get that time limit down to two minutes. What that is, is think of that as like a cron. Things will happen instantly and will trigger a zap, but other things will happen based on time. And with the free version and the $20 a month version, that's only gonna happen every 15 minutes. Uh, the thing that that got me earlier is I was setting up the MailChimp uh, zap. I didn't think it was working, set it up multiple times, checked my email 10 minutes later. I had like seven uh, emails in there waiting for, the, uh, waiting for me to uh, double opt into the sign up because it was a 15 minute process. So that was just me being a little bit rushed, realizing there's a 15 minute wait. Sometimes it happens instantly. Sometimes you have that 15 minute thing. Uh, so it's definitely worth the price. The 15 minute thing, as long as you know it's there, you know, it's not that big of a deal. The other add-ons are the multi-step, which are nice in the premium uh, features. So these are the things, uh, these are some of the direct links to some of the app integrations. Uh, the ones in orange, we're gonna actually talk about today, but the ones on the sheet is the ones that I actually use. It's Buffer, Gravity Forms. Uh, now, Gravity Forms is just one example. Uh, they probably have Caldera Forms, Contact Form 7, uh, Ninja Forms, whatever, insert WooCommerce, uh, WordPress form here, they have it. Uh, MailChimp, same thing, Aweber, Constant Contact. If you want a different zap, they have it, but I've been using MailChimp. Uh, I use Asana. They also got Trillo integration, Zoom, uh, Gmail integration, Google Sheets, which we're gonna go over a little bit, uh, and Slack, which I actually really enjoy. I also use Trillo, uh, uh, Twilio, meaning, sorry, for SMS. If you don't have an SMS service or use that, Slack is a great way because I also have Slack on my phone. It's going to ping my desktop, my phone. It's all over the place. It's the same uh, without the extra service. Okay, so what this is is a quick overview of some of the most popular uh, apps that work with um, Zapier. And we're going to go over a couple of these. And here's the premium ones. When you uh, pay with a premium, when you use a premium Zapier service, you can unlock three to six or whatever, whatever plan you're using. I haven't really used the premium ones in a while. Uh, these are new. Uh, some of the QuickBooks stuff might be really nice to integrate some of that in with my business. But um, I just wanted to show this. Uh, 
And again, these aren't necessarily us promoting. This is just showing you these are some options here. And this is strictly informational. Uh, but what I want to show you here is the integrations that Zapier has for LearnDash. Uh, now we're going to go over this for the, a couple of them, but and we'll go over this in more detail later. But this is a screenshot directly from their website. And these are the triggers that Zapier offers. Course completion, quiz completion, lesson completion, enrollment into a course, essay submission, topic completion. These are the actions that you can take at any point. So one thing you could think, these triggers are anything that can start a Zap. These actions are anything that you can do after the Zap has been triggered. So you can trigger add to group, remove from course, enroll in the course, remove from group, at uh, any point from any other Zap app. And that's an add-on in, in our Zapier 2.0. So if you're still using our Zapier 1.0 uh, X branch, uh, I recommend to upgrade. You get all these cool new features. Um, same thing here. These are some quick integrations that you can just click try it. It's going to instantly add it to your Zap, a Zapier account. And uh, you can, so we're going to go over these examples a little bit later, but you can, let's say you're selling from Shopify. If you want to sell a Shopify course and then tie it into your LearnDash uh, course itself, you can, um, if you want to sell a Shopify product and tie it to a LearnDash course, you can do it through Zapier. Same thing. Um, if you want to go, when someone enrolls into your LearnDash course, automatically add them to a certain newsletter so they can get the uh, drip feed content from your newsletter service tied directly to only that course. Uh, same thing, it, what happens if someone signs up for a newsletter and you want to enroll them into your free marketing course? You could do the same thing. And we'll go over all that a little bit later, which is uh, really simple to do, uh, actually. Uh, but I wanted everyone to see this. This is a quick screenshot of just some quick out of the box stuff that you can get going with just a couple clicks without actually having to do anything. If you already have your LearnDash key and plugin uh, activated and you already have like your MailChimp uh, set up and activated, to, to turn this on is literally, you're gonna click the try it button and it's gonna be good to go. Uh, so we'll go over that a little bit later. Uh, the two more that I wanted to show quickly uh, we're not going to go over much of this today, but I wanted everyone to at least get the uh, the idea that out of the box, you get everything from WooCommerce. I know a lot of our users sell their courses with WooCommerce. It's not mandatory, but uh, sometimes our users extend LearnDash with a shopping cart, and a lot of times that happens to be WooCommerce. If you're using WooCommerce, you can now trigger all these fantastic things based off of actions that are already happening uh, and create new apps based off that. Uh, we're not going to read them all because this is just for information. The links are here. Uh, you can check these out later. Same thing with actions. Now WooCommerce also has something called searches. So you can, you can go a step further. We only have triggers and actions. LearnDash has searches and filters as well. So quick little actions. Same thing with WordPress integrations themselves. So not only do you have the LearnDash side, you can go granular and go, uh, WooCommerce itself, but you can go even broader and go to the WordPress level. Uh, think of it like um, a new post is created, new comments are added, I th there's a new user that's being added. Uh, so I think the ones that are probably be the most useful would definitely be the, the new user being added. Uh, the things that you want to be careful of, and I think I actually have it as a uh, as a tip. We'll, we'll, we'll save that. Um, I'll just say it now. Something you want to be careful of <laughs> is using triggers when creating new posts. Uh, I highly recommend going through some type of edit flow process when you're publishing posts to your company's website, making sure that it goes through the proper uh, spell checks, um, marketing, images, alt tags, SEO, accessibility, all that stuff. Because by the time that it goes live and you have an automation set up, uh, you can hit publish. It now goes out to all your social media sites with typos or um, the wrong link because you you rush something and hit publish. Uh, I've had that happen to me personally, uh, my fault. I've also had that happen in staging environments where I've done testing and I went to go publish something to make sure things are working. Didn't realize it was still set up to some automation tools and also push things out. That happened through Jetpack because Jetpack has some automation through social 
So just something to keep in mind. Uh, these features can be really awesome, but sometimes they can be a little unforgiving uh, if you're not fully aware of what's happening uh, in, a, in a fully automated system. So uh, be aware <laughs> when you're clicking publish what might happen. Uh, and same thing here, these are the actions, create posts, cre uh, create media. So uh, these are the actions from the WordPress side. Moving on, so these are some quick things. These are what I was talking about earlier. See, directly to WordPress, to Twitter, to Facebook, vice versa. Um, yeah, they can be very powerful. Uh, also can get you in trouble if you're not be careful. And that's this tip, <laughs> remember that. Uh, other resources, so, um, in case you are using the legacy format or you do want to use the webhook version, which does cost uh, the premium features of Zapier, uh, you can see the first video here. Uh, I was also enjoyed a nice talk from Sean uh, Nickel uh, from Sydney. He uh, is actually uh, from Singapore, I believe, but he's originally from Australia. It's a talk from December last year about how he uses Zapier in his agency to automate a lot of things. This isn't really anything about LearnDash, but it is a nice uh, video about WordPress in general and how he uses Zapier in his business. And it's about 35 minutes. I watched it on two times speed. I, I found it very useful. Nice video for later if you had some time. And here's some resources from our site. Uh, nice blog post. Uh, Laura wrote a fantastic article, 11, uh, 11 Zap, uh, Zapier workflows to automate your marketing. I'm going to go over a couple of them. I didn't want to go over all of them because then you won't read the article. Uh, the uh, Zapier post, that's about our older stuff. And uh, it's still a lot of good information there, but it's the older version. And then our uh, actual support documentation that shows how to set everything up. Uh, from a uh, written standpoint. Okay, so here's some common use cases, non-LearnDash ideas. Now, everything we're going over could be tied to LearnDash. You could use any of these things and trigger different things in LearnDash. Uh, and so this list is a little bit sparse because of the, the next two pages are actual, you know, Learn Dash idea. So you could do a lot more with this. And again, there's 2,000 apps that integrate right now uh, with, uh, with with Zapier. So my little list here is just to, just to get your ideas flowing. Uh, I use a lot of things to Slack. What that be uh, emails, Twitter notifications, keyword tweets, hashtags different things that I'm following in different groups. Uh, I send a lot of those things to Slack using uh, Zapier. Uh, I, a lot of times people will send their newsletter signups to any type of CRM. Uh, CRM is a customer relationship manager tool. Uh, different things, and when I'm saying things, it could really be anything, any trigger. Uh, things to Google Sheets, we're gonna go over that today actually. Uh, Invoicing, sometimes it's generating an invoice, sometimes it's sending it to QuickBooks, FreshBooks, different uh, invoicing tools, lots of things with forms. So uh, submit a basic form, do X, uh, submit a form, put it here, make spreadsheets uh, with it. Uh, a lot of people use Zapier to, like I said, search Twitter, collect data, build lists, uh, find sales, generate sales and leads. So they'll generate, uh, you know, based off contact forms or requests and, and they'll generate them and start putting them through a funnel, generate stuff, send out requests, follow up emails, X days without a, uh, someone signing in, you know, type emails. You could say, hey, you know, haven't heard from you in a while or same thing with the deal. Uh, hey, we sent you this proposal two weeks ago. Are you, uh, are you interested or let's set up another meeting? Like, and you can automate a lot of that stuff uh, through Zapier. Here's a quick screenshot uh, of a, uh, of a five-step zap that actually had seven steps. And the funny thing is, this is a sales process uh, from the presentation that I was talking about earlier from the Sydney talk. And he was saying, 
once this is finished and then this goes and gets officially signed off and through the sales process and once they officially sign off it dumps them to another funnel so they have a funnel that comes in five-step funnel then they have a little manual process meeting time and then it goes right back into another sales funnel that helps them with onboarding and i thought that was really cool uh, i'd love to see the other side of that funnel but he didn't go into it okay here's the learn dash triggers and in actions so you have you can enroll into a course course completion lesson completion topic completion quiz pass quiz fail quiz complete which is just someone took the test an essay submission i really like the essay submission one we'll go over an example of why at the end uh, and these are the actions that can happen you can add someone to a, a course you can remove someone from a course you can add uh, a new user to a Learn Dash group. You can remove someone from the Learn Dash group. Here's some common use cases um, with Learn Dash and Zapier. I got two pages of these. Uh, yeah, course enrollment. Send a new email or add them to a new email list. So when someone signs up to a course, make sure they get added to the email list that's just tied to that course, uh, and start that drip feed of content. So They'll be, uh, you know, it, it, you know, they can be all the assignments and, and lectures and homework and can all be all planned out, but they can start getting that on a drip feed campaign uh, that's geared directly to them from the moment they signed up to that course. Uh, we talked about it again earlier, the CRM. So once they enroll in your course, you add them to the CRM. When someone enrolls in your course, you add them to your help desk software. You can create them in their own account there just in case or however you need to. Uh, this is one that I like to do uh, is the quiz data to a spreadsheet. So when someone takes a quiz or, or uh, takes a test, dump that out to a spreadsheet just to watch that, those results or who's taking it or how often they're taking it. Uh, quiz completion, send a notice to Slack, post a message to Slack channel or topic, or even a social. Uh, that one's a little tricky, but as long as you're like, one more student passed this test and you kind of like strip out any of the important information. That's also a cool little, like one more passed our test. That's a cool little thing you can automate and show and set up a little bit of social buzz. Uh, again, course completion, sending out an email, congratulating them. Uh, course completion, you can add some tags or custom fields. So you can start segmenting your list more based on actions, they complete a course, you now add more core, uh, tags, you add them to new courses, to new lists, to different funnels based off of uh, different tags that they've already completed courses. And based off those tags, you can start upselling or triggering different sales emails based off courses they haven't taken, all based off tags, uh, which can get really powerful. Course completion, you can send them to a webinar, so they finish one course, and they finish an intro course, or you have a light version or a free, uh, and then you can send them over to your, maybe do a sales webinar, or maybe they finished your course, and then you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So maybe not a webinar, but maybe it's still Zoom. So you can complete the course, send out a meeting, so now you can have a one-on-one -on -one chat, get some feedback, or you can set out that webinar in the future so all your students completing it are now getting invited to that webinar. And then a month from now, you're gonna have the webinar. All your students were already invited when they completed the test and they did the course. So a lot of cool, fun features there. Uh, work, and then you can get notified when payments fail, uh, different versions of updates. Uh, maybe that should have been in the other, uh, other list, but still a useful little thing. So now, how do you set up Zapier with LearnDash? There's two options. If you have an active licensed LearnDash uh, uh, account, all you have to do is go to your add-ons, scroll down to Zapier, click install Zapier, and you're good. Uh, if you still have a licensed uh, account, but you have maybe a locked down version or you have to use Git or some type of version control, you can log into your account to support, you can download the plugin through support, upload it, activate it, or add it to your Git repo, submit it, or however you do through your own workflow. Either way, uh, you should be able to add it just like any other plugin or use our add-ons menu. 
Okay, the legacy Zapier 1.x still works, but we recommend not to use it because the version 2.x, uh, actually I think we're up to 2.1 at this point, has way better integration and a lot more features. The old one still works, but we don't recommend using it because the new one's better. And the first two uh, FAQs here we're going to ignore. Uh, they're just older. But one thing that I want to, I do want to review is sometimes it's brought up is can I enroll, can I trigger uh, an enrollment on an open course? The answer is no, because when a course is open, there's no registration. So in order to trigger registration, that course would have to be set to free. So you can still have it for free, but the free designation requires uh, a registration. So if you want to force a, a register an enrollment into a course, that course needs to be at least a level of free. Open will not work. Okay, uh, just a basic tip. You should check out our other webinars. Uh, we do these every two weeks. These come from the Facebook group. If you have any suggestions or would like a topic, please let us know. Uh, I would also recommend that you su subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, so it's walkthrough time. Uh, these are the things that we're gonna cover. Uh, right now we're looking at about, uh, about 25 minutes in into the presentation and I wanna cover these, these five things plus the basic install. Uh, quiz completion, when someone completes a quiz, I want that information to go to a Google Doc. Then I also want to, uh, when someone submits an essay, I want that to create a ticket in Asana so that I know that I have to go and review that ticket. It's sort of a uh, to-do reminder, hey, go and do this. There's been a ticket submitted. You need to take care of this. It's time sensitive. Uh, we're going to set it up so when you add a MailChimp subscriber, uh, when, when someone automatically enrolls in the course. So if you sign up, you're gonna get added to MailChimp. We're gonna also set up a course completion, send that notice to Slack, and we're gonna set it up so when you complete a course, you get added to the next course. That seems like a lot, uh, but it's actually pretty easy. So let's check this out move this out of the way. And so what everyone can see that I have, I am logged in in an incognito browser with, uh, with a user named Zapier and I have, and I'm not registered to any courses. So I am registered, I mean, I am signed up to the class, I mean to the, I'm sorry. I am signed up to the site, but I am not enrolled in any courses. So if we look at my account page, zero courses and there and that's on the left and on the right I'm logged in as the admin and I'm also logged into Asana to Google Docs uh, to learn dash MailChimp and Zapier so these are the zaps I'm gonna have to turn these off and I want to turn them off because I can only have five on at a time and we're going to create a new one. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is on quiz completion, we're going to send that to a Google Doc. So let's create a new Zap. What I want to do is I want to say Learn Dash. And on quiz complete. And what it's gonna do is it's, see right here, it says Learn Dash is a select partner with Zapier. Your credentials can be are encrypted. So these are my settings that I already have set up. Uh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Uh, these are the, set, they're already set up. If I needed to edit them, I could come in here and rekey these if I needed to. Uh, it's just like any other time you click on something. Uh, if I, it was the Google spreadsheet, I click Google, it would open up the Google thing, I log in, I click accept, it closes, then I'm connected. So I don't wanna overcomplicate that. These are already connected. It's just like when you connect it to any other 
application, log in, type your password, click accept, you're good. Now, since that's already there, it says, oh, you want to use your LearnDash connection? I do. Now it says, pick which quiz you want to uh, pick from. And this is the test data. Now, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you've already completed at least one quiz through the system. So there's user data there. If you haven't done it, if you haven't completed a quiz, there's not going to be anything for Zachary to test with. So you want to make sure that you've at least failed or completed the quiz once. So what I wanted to do is whenever that quiz is taken, I wanted to add it to a Google Doc. So we're going to go uh, say, I actually want to spread it to a, a Google spreadsheet. So I want to say Google Sheets. I want to update a spreadsheet row. So the thing is, when you click it the first time, it selects it. And when you go back and you click it again, it gives you the, it, it does like a, like a smart search. So you can pick where your, your words from. So I, my slide is in my Google drive. I know that it's going to be inside my learn dash Zapier slide. I'm going to work from the first spreadsheet and it's just going to tell it to start at row five and you can line this stuff up. So if you look at my spreadsheet here, this is, there's nothing fancy. I added name, quiz, time, pass, fail. These don't matter. These in, for the purpose of the demo, I would recommend going through these settings more. But for what I'm doing, I literally just added some names there. And that's where these are coming from. So any of my data will be there. I can say my display name, uh, the, my, uh, the quiz. It could be anything. Now, to be honest, I said quiz because I saw quiz here before. But I don't think that quiz is actually what we need it to be. Uh, you can also search here, get the timestamp, say pass. I don't think the fail really, really counts uh, for fail. Uh, I think a pass is one or zero, not uh, We'll say score. So uh, we'll set test and review. It said it worked. We're going to go back over to the spreadsheet. Now it has a uh, new row in it. This is new. So if we come over to our, our course, well, let's set up a couple other things too before we start. Uh, before we go through the whole process over there. Uh, now, the one thing that I, it's a little confusing is what course, what, what quiz there are we picking? So let's go over that again real fast. I didn't see that. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I know it's going to work, but I'm not sure what it's pulling from. Um, so uh, let's turn this one on because I know this one will work. We're also, I want to look at the, the next one, which is the essay submission. The, the thing that I, I really like about this is, let's say you have an essay and someone submits it and that needs to be reviewed. So you want to make sure that that's taken care of in a timely fashion for your students and it's not holding them up. So let's create a zap for that. So we're going to say, go back to learn dash. We're going to say, uh, this also got me, this scrolls. So the first time 
So we'll check that. So we're going to say when essay is submitted, when any essay is submitted, use the same Zap connection we've already been using. Uh, and see, this is this is where you can pick the essay to. Uh, I believe it would also load any of the other questions here. Uh, if you have multiple essays, I believe this is where the, it would show up. And then once I have that done, what I want to say is I want to trigger an Asana ticket. I want to create a uh, task. I want to use the uh, login that I already have set up. What I'm going to do is I want to say, I want to add it to the Learn Dash project. I'm going to add it to the Learn Dash Academy board. And I'm going to add it to the essay review section. I'm going to uh, insert this notes. The notes is going to be the essay title, the essay content, and the user email. Uh, the name is going to be essay title and the uh, user email. Uh, I want to assign this to myself. Again, these are going to list all your users. Status, upcoming, connect. Test and continue. So now, um, when someone submits an essay, I should also get an Asana ticket over here. So let's go test a couple of these things. So I'm going to enroll into this course. I'm going to take this course. Now, since I'm already registered to the site, I just have to take the course. Now I'm actually registered. Uh, now that I'm registered, I can come over here and take this quiz. My first quiz. Uh, if I answer false, that shows the test just showed up here on another spreadsheet. So if you wanted to track your users who were taking tests and every time someone comes and takes a test and just get a running list to just see how people are doing or maybe just to make sure that all the questions make sense or, or isn't stumping anyone, this might be an easy way to track that data. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do is let's talk about, um, let's set up when you someone enrolls in it, when someone completes a course, we want them to get enrolled into a new course. So let's set that up. Uh, one thing that also got me to is once you complete a zap, it doesn't automatically turn it on. So set it up and then you have to turn it on. Uh, it wasn't working for me earlier because it wasn't on. So what I want to do is I want to go to Learn Dash. I want to say complete a course. So like the Learn Dash we already have integrated. Test trigger. Where to go? Uh, Learn Dash again. This time we're going to uh, enroll in the course. Select Zap. Continue. So what I'm doing is again, uh, when you select these inputs, the inputs that are tied to the website from the test data are pulled up. If I did not submit the form ahead of time, there or no users, there there wouldn't be any of this test data showing.
Okay. So now, uh, once I hit submit, or once I go back to this course, and I mark the course as complete, in theory, I should be uh, enrolled into the other course as well. Now, I might have already had it completed before the zap was set up. Oh, I also know why. I'm also forgot to turn it on. Did that again. So now that'll work. Uh, so let's try that again. Let's go over here and remove my uh, myself from that quiz. And this is the last thing I want to do, because I know this is going to start to get a, a little bit uh, boring and repetitive, but uh, I promise you this is going to be cool once, uh, once we see this all working. Let's remove myself from that course. Let's go look at our zaps again. And let's refresh. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we know that that zaps on, that zaps on. Oh, we forgot to turn on our sauna ticket one. Okay, so. Let's do this again. Let's enroll here, take the course. My first quiz, start the quiz. It's time when I answer true. Should be good to go. Course home. This time I should be in two courses. Now I'm in two courses. Before I was only in one. Now I'm going to come here and check out the second course. I'm going to start it. I'm going to fill out this essay. Start the essay. Now I haven't necessarily finished this quiz, I mean this course, but I did finish the essay. So if I come over to here, and now we have the two essay questions set up. So there you go. Uh, from that, we have our, our basic completion, send to Google Doc, essay completed, send to a sauna ticket, uh, add mail, uh, add, uh, MailChimp subscriber when someone enrolls in a course. Uh, I, I'll go over that real fast, but that's going to be a 15 minute thing to get that to trigger an email. Uh, course completions into Slack, that's pretty easy. We'll go over that uh, in a second. And course completion, uh, next course. So let's do the Slack thing real fast. We'll not worry about the MailChimp because it's take 15 minutes to get that email in. But the Slack thing's pretty easy. And we'll call that a day and start answering some questions. So let's go learn dash. And let's say whenever someone completes a course, We want them to send us a Slack message. Uh, Slack message channel. You have to authenticate this too, so that's just my my user. Epic channel. Let's put in the general room. Uh, And there you go. So I'm going to share this. 
I mean, uh, turn this one on. And we're going to come over here and uh, finish our course. We're complete. Our course is uh, in progress. I need to complete the first lesson next. Oh, I don't think it's complete because the essay isn't marked complete. But uh, yeah, that's why that won't mark complete. Uh, but it will send to our Slack. I'll bring up the Slack message. It just sent a test message over here to general. And uh, see, this is the nice work test Slack. We have a couple minutes for questions. Yeah, James, thanks so much for going through all that. Um, as people can see, there's a lot you can do with Zapier with and without Learn Dash involved, but these are some good examples of how you can use the Zapier specific triggers and actions. So there's a question here. Um, so we have a Learn Dash notifications add on, which does a lot with, you know, when somebody, say, completes a course, you can send out a notification through the notification add on. Uh, what is the advantage to using Zapier for these situations for like the, the notification or email uh, situations as opposed to maybe the Zap, uh, the Learn Dash notifications add on? Yeah. Uh, so I, I like to look, use Zapier more as an internal marketing tool that I would be notifying myself with or notifying myself in a different fashion other than email. Like email is good. And I think email is great to, to update your customers. But the thing that I use the most, honestly, is Slack because it's going to ping the channels that I need. It's going to ping the important people uh, and it's going to ping my phone. So a lot of times I'm going to be tying in notifications on things that are completed or important things to a third party app just to get my attention or so it makes a note somewhere else. So it doesn't necessarily get lost in the email clutter. Uh, so the notifications I would be setting up would be for internal use or marketing or upsell purposes, not necessarily um, the touch point notifications. Yeah, that's a good distinction. And speaking of email, for email-based actions, do you have to use an app like an email app like Gmail or Outlook? Um, that I'm not sure because I've only ever used it with Gmail. Um, so... I don't, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to try that. Okay, very good. So uh, let's see, going through some other questions here. So can you have someone buy a course on another site and use a Zap to enroll them into a LearnDash course, which exists on another domain? Or does it have to be a membership site that integrates with LearnDash? Um, yeah, so I you, think I can answer this one. Yeah, the, go for it. The, the first part of that question. So can I, someone buy a course on another site and use a Zap to enroll Learn Dash course? Yep, you can do that. So you can do that with, uh, let's say James mentioned Shopify earlier. So if you had Shopify, uh, you're using that, that's another domain, that's another site. You have a product on Shopify, you set up a Zap so that when somebody purchases that product, they also get enrolled into a Learn Dash course. And maybe that course exists on you know, courses.yourdomain.com you know, that's a different site or it could just be a, an entirely different domain altogether does not have to be a subdomain and they would be enrolled onto that. You would just need to, uh, when you set up your zap, specify that uh, where learn dash is installed and that's all part of the process. So yeah, you definitely can do that. Um, okay. Let's see. Some of the questions are in, uh, Let's see, somebody having a specific issue with the Zap. Um, there's no bugs with the Zap uh, Zapier integration that uh, we have right now, but if you want to raise a ticket, you can uh, provide us maybe zero details and some access so we can get to the Zap. We can, I think actually this is pretty useful. Zapier just created a feature where you can export a Zap. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to provide 
um, credentials for us to like log into your Zapier account if you don't want to. We've done that in the past. Our support has, that is. But you can export your Zaps onto our team and then our support team can upload that into their test environments and, and test that Zap out on our end. So uh, that's one option. Um, once someone wants to make sure that the flow can go from other apps to Learn Dash, not just Learn Dash to other apps. Yes, that's correct. You can have other apps trigger things to happen in LearnDash, specifically in course enrollment, removing someone from a course, uh, adding someone to a group or removing someone from a group. Now that in conjunction with the groups uh, enhancements with the membership capabilities is pretty cool. So you can now add somebody to a group, which then gives them even more access or more permissions on your site, depending on how you set up LearnDash groups which can automatically enroll people into a certain number of courses, give them view permissions into various uh, other pages or materials on your website, things like that. So that, uh, that memberships uh, enhancement to the groups feature that we have is really uh, this opened up the doors for your possibilities for how you offer content on your website, be it in a course or not even in a course. So uh, that's all the questions that we had. I know we kind of zipped through those pretty quickly. If you have any follow-ups, you can post in our Facebook group. Also, if you have any ideas as to more webinar topics that you'd like us to cover, please post those in the Facebook group as well. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, it's learndash.com slash Facebook. That'll bring you to our group. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye everyone.